On today's video, we're going to go over some game camera setup tips. Hey there, outdoor YouTubers. So, you're going to head out in the woods and you're going to set up a game camera, or two, or three or more. Well, you're definitely going to want to maximize the effectiveness of that camera, right? So here's a few tips that's going to help you out with that. First of all, game camera location is a huge factor in getting a good idea of what kind of animals are out in the woods roaming around. There might be a lot of deer in a particular area, but if you place the cameras in spots where the deer don't travel very often, you might not get a true representation of what's actually out there. So no matter what animal you're trying to get a picture of, always think about travel routes and food sources. Travel routes can be actual noticeable animal trails, they can be two rut roads, they can be transition areas, from hardwoods to swamp, field edges, river edges, bottlenecks, or pinch points. And an example of that would be like where two bodies of water come together and maybe there's only a small strip of woods between the two. That would kind of funnel animal traveling activity into one kind of smaller spot and that could be a good place to place a game camera. And another example of a bottleneck or a pinch point could be a small strip of woods between two open fields. Another good animal travel route is along beaver dams. Sometimes beaver dams act as bridges across waterways. And a lot of different types of wildlife like to use those convenient bridges as a path to get across those waterways. Natural food sources like apples, acorns or berries will definitely attract a lot of different types of wildlife. Then you can also put out your own food sources in the woods depending on your local game laws. Where I hunt in Michigan's Upper Peninsula you can put bait out for deer and bears. Then sometimes in the winter I'll put out a deer carcass to see what kind of meat eaters I can attract. Okay so we've got the spot picked out and now we have to go ahead and mount the camera. Now, most game cameras or trail cameras come with straps for mounting the cameras to trees or maybe even a fence post. And those work fine, but I really like using these fully adjustable screw-in mounts. These screw-in mounts allow you to point or angle the camera pretty much any way you want. Ideally, I try not to point the camera into a sunset or a sunrise because when either of those two things is happening and your camera gets triggered and takes a picture, the picture is going to turn out very shadowy with all this kind of bright light in the background and you really won't get very good pictures. Now if you're going to be mounting this camera along some sort of animal trail or a two rut road or maybe a field edge. Anywhere where you think these animals are going to be traveling kind of in a line, okay, don't just mount your camera facing kind of perpendicular to that path or that line that you think the animals are going to travel. Mount the camera so it's looking down that line or up that line, however you want to word it. That gives your camera a lot more opportunities to trigger and get good pictures. Maybe you'll get multiple pictures. You know, if you just kind of mount it like right along the edge of a two-rut road, you're going to wind up getting a lot of pictures of the butt of a deer, or you're going to get pictures of nothing because the animal came by, triggered it, and by the time the camera took the picture, the animal was right out of the camera's view. So, you know, anytime you think animals are going to be traveling in a certain line or edge, point that camera looking up or down that line.
Hey, archery hunters, be sure to stop by Camaro's Crawlers and check out Ronnie Camaro's full selection of used arrows. And if you need to purchase your Michigan deer hunting license, be sure to stop by Camaro's Crawlers and Ronnie Camaro will direct you to a store that sells hunting licenses. Camaro's Crawlers has all your hunting needs covered. Now, if you feel like there's a lot of animal activity in one particular spot or area, don't be afraid to use multiple cameras from different angles. When I put out deer carcasses in the winter, I'll usually put at least four cameras over that deer carcass, all at different angles. This way, you get more pictures of the animals as they're approaching the carcass, and you also get more pictures of the different animals that are kind of lingering off to the side of the carcass. Because not all animals will come right in and be exactly where you think they're going to be. So if you got four cameras or even more out there, there's a good chance one of those cameras is going to have the right angle. And don't be afraid to use the video feature on your game cameras. Sometimes this gives you a lot more information about the animal. Was it running? Was it walking? Was it cautious? Did it seem at ease? And also, if you're looking to count points or assess a rack on a deer, video can really help out with that. Sometimes with one still frame picture, a deer might have its head turned in a weird way, it might have its head down in the grass, but if you had one 10 second video clip of that same deer, that video clip might tell you everything you need to know about the deer's rack or any other feature that you're interested in. Now, if you're going to put out game cameras or trail cameras when there's snow expected, it really helps to mount that camera underneath a tree that has a little bit of a canopy to it. That canopy will help keep snow from building up on your camera, snow that's going to cover up the lens, the sensing device, or even the flash. And if you're going to leave a camera out long term in the winter, like I do sometimes, you need to think about how much snow is going to build up. Here in the snow belt of Michigan's Upper Peninsula where I live and hunt, it's very common for snow to build up 3-4 feet or even more. So if you mount that camera and maybe it's only 3 feet off the ground, it's eventually going to get buried with snow. And when it comes to snow, you'll also want to keep in mind that some overhanging branches may accumulate with snow, start sagging down, and block the camera's view. And you'll also want to eliminate any kind of branches, ferns, or grass that might sway with the wind in front of your camera. You'll want to cut these things out with loppers or maybe even a weed whacker. It's just a big waste of time in battery life when you get 150 pictures of grass waving in the wind and also use good quality batteries in your game cameras and always check the battery life each time you check on the camera okay guys I hope some of those tips help you get more and better pictures with your game cameras Eat shark. very good so guys if you're interested in more videos about getting out and enjoying the great outdoors of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, be sure to check out the entire channel. And if you enjoy what you see, please consider liking and subscribing. And for bonus content, be sure to check out our Patreon page. A link to this page can be found in the description of this video. And also guys, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. Thanks for watching and God bless.